we got a package to Bald Eagle Diesel. Look at that new knife. Fog. I'm gonna open this. Yeah, let's do it this way. Let's say what is in here. I didn't order this, this was sent to me. This is my first time seeing it. Same as you. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. Sweet. We got hats. We got hats for days. Trucker hats with camo. Kopma. Which is the cranes that we use. Or the knuckle booms, rather. Get rid of these tags real quick. This might be a backwards hat for me. Because I don't like too much of a trucker hat. But... What do you guys think? Still looks stupid? Yeah. Oh, it's dirty. There you go. Now you can see. Anyways, we have to get the 450 ready for working tomorrow. We're going to get the compressor on here. We got to do, I don't know, probably some stuff. And we got to try and get the knives off the head. Somehow I was able to flip this over in the bed of the truck. Um, and we have no idea how long it was like that. So um, it's probably low on oil. So actually, I should check that because all the oil came out of the, the uh, air filter. See it? That's cool. So check the oil. I guess it has some fuel in it, not too much. But uh, yeah, hopefully it still runs. But I gotta find some oil. There's some. Ugh. All right. How did I get this in there? Wow, that does not. <laughs> that ain't gonna work <laughs> at all. Maybe we'll use. A little death never hurt nobody. Right? That is retarded. That should work. Right. It won't start if it's low. It also won't start if it's broken, so. I guess we're about to find out. On choke. Oh, she got some compression. Oh, all right. I think she might be still low on oil. Yep. Might look funny, but death finally saved the day. So, let's try this again on. She wanted to. I'm 
assuming there's a bunch of oil hand fuel in the cylinder <laughs> that we have to kind of burn out of there. <laughs> See if we can break some of this off. Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm going the right way. Yeah. This fucking ratchet. Breaker bar has seen better days. Whatever. Oh, come on. Oh. <laughs> nope. Let's try the impact. Still not able to budge these things. So I'll probably have to get the torch out next week. I think this is the stripped one. Maybe not. Yep. That's really gonna be a fun one to get out. But let's work on this one. Because if you don't apply apply your anti-seize in a ridiculous amount um, under power then you ain't mechanicin you ain't you ain't wrenching let's zip this bit shut Perfect. Got it. We should change this one. Really should. It's so much easier with this. It is just like 
night and day, honestly. If you're wondering if PB Blaster works, just look at this. A week ago, a week ago today, or no, tomorrow, I sprayed PB Blaster in all these holes. And it is still there. Right here. That's all PB Blaster. Yeah, <laughs> you can smell it. So, PB Blaster clearly works. It's just not good enough. So I think I'm just going to keep the NICs going and uh, probably, um, I mean this one doesn't really need to get flipped I guess, damn it. Um, but keep the NICs going and then maybe once a week just hit it with PB Blaster just to keep them nice and loose so they're a little easier to change. Um, keep up on some maintenance. We are rolling. We got the Multra back there. And it is Saturday morning, 6.15. Beautiful sunrise coming up behind us. And, uh, yeah, we are on the way. We gotta stop at a truck stop somewhere and get fuel. Because I need fuel in the transfer tank. And, damn it, I forgot to change the filter of the transfer tank. Whatever. Um, but we gotta fill the transfer tank. We gotta get ice and water and stuff for the cooler um but yeah going down the road we got two hours and eight minutes i don't know if you see that so hopefully a bummer pull makes it well one thing that I was just kind of like crossing my fingers about was well, the tires on the bumper pull. And we made it, what? Half an hour? And yup. So. Now we gotta figure out where there's the nearest tire shop. Well, the wife's gonna come and pick us up and we're gonna go um, take the tire to the tire shop and have them fix it. Instead of one of them coming to us. So, hopefully no one steals the machine while we're gone. We are in a throw fitting. Going to get some tires. Look at Jason in the back there. Just chilling. Like a little stud. Can't see shit. But... Look at him. He don't like the sun. He needs to get him. He needs to learn how to wear some sunglasses. Get some baby coasters. But we're on the way to go get a tire replaced. So let's see how long this takes. There's my tire. See? Take a bite.
finally trying to continue to slow on up the head a little bit but what we're doing here first we're just opening up a four-wheeler trail through the uh through the woods um two years well about two years ago actually i actually was the first one in here to, to mulch it open it up so they could put their weekend escape in um but yeah we're gonna about to tear this tear these woods a new one and then we're probably gonna do some clearing as well uh or just opening up of an area So we are back in the machine. We have our maps up and we gotta make two points on this property. Me. Um, so we gotta make two rights basically. Um, but it has to be a fun two rights. So that the trail, so the trail is fun to ride on and also safe though too. So, cause there are children that we ride in this trail. Um, so we're gonna just kind of take it easy, make sure we always have our bearings, um, and uh, make sure our satellite cell signal stays strong, or our GPS signal, I mean, can stay strong. Uh, and actually, the uh, the more we open it, the stronger our cell signal will actually become. So it's, uh, it's a cool kind of thing to watch. Uh, when you don't have signal at all and then as you slowly open a property up all of a sudden the signal starts coming in and uh, that's why we don't go straight to fence lines immediately property lines we typically try to stay in the middle until our signal gets strong especially if we have a poor signal in the beginning we try to get our signal strong and then go out and uh mulch so here we go
we we'll be a little easy on it, but we tear this shit up. Yeah. Man. Once we get going, man, once this thing is a little bit established, we'll tear this shit up. There's a couple spots you gotta watch out for the branches. Huh? Yeah, he said there was a, up here around the turn there's yeah. a tree that I gotta get or something. <laughs> curling down right if I take that tree down it's gonna open it up too much from that tree line yeah but so I can go under it we can go sh keep doing the straightaway and have a jog instead of this hard yeah that, I think that I mean, if we could do that would be preferable and that's the yeah. only this is the only really everything else just post off but this part right here especially for the kids is gonna be tricky yeah I'll just come back and make it straighter there under the under the branch other than that that's it man this is funny Wait till we bring the can am out. We're gonna fuck it up in the can am. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. We and dirt bike. Hell yeah. Shit. Oh, yeah. There's plenty of room for a jump right here too. Yeah, get some little berms and stuff going around these corners. This is the first day. We'll get it where we want it. Right. <laughs> well, you two, we got her done. Almost ran out of fuel because for some reason. The pump on the transfer tank don't want the transfer. So, gotta look at that tomorrow. But that was that was a fun uh, four-wheeler trail, side-by-side -side trail to mulch because it wasn't just a straight line. It, has, it had some character. And uh, hopefully soon we'll have some video from the client of a, uh, of a Can-Am ripping with a turbo. Ripping, uh, ripping it up over there. Um, once they kind of learn it and get the uh, the kinks worked out, but we are. Where are we? We're in Trenton, Trenton, Florida, on our way home. So we gotta find some fuel because we only have half a tank, and uh, clearly the transfer tank isn't working. So. Anyways, that's probably it for this video, so I'll see you guys later.